Hey guys, before we get into today's video, I want to give a massive thanks to a couple sponsors that helped make this one happen. The first one being Gunspot. Gunspot is an online listing and auction site for both new and used firearms. Individuals and dealers alike can list items, not just firearms, but also ammo, accessories, and more. As a buyer, there's no hidden fees or out-of-state sales tax when you make a purchase. Again, that's Gunspot. Check them out for all of your buying and listing needs for everything pertaining to this subject. Lastly, I want to thank PARD. PARD manufactures innovative night and thermal imaging devices. The TD32, for instance, features a multi-spectral thermal day and night mode, onboard ballistic calculator, rechargeable and removable battery, and a 1920 by 1080 display. You can even record HD video either out by an SD card or by wirelessly connecting your phone. You can check out the TD32 and other offerings from PARD at PARD.com. Now, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into today's video. Hey, what's going on guys? Brandon here with Texas Plinking, and this is going to be the start, first episode of a new series. And uh, for those of you who've been subscribed for a couple years, it might be similar to a, another one. So every now and then I find myself in a position where I have a couple different guns that I want to showcase. I'm excited to showcase, but maybe they don't really justify a whole video on their own. One, because it'll be too short of a video. And maybe the enthusiasm is very niche on that particular gun to where the views just wouldn't be there to make it worthwhile anyway. So sometimes a lot of these types of guns kind of come together. And then I kind of want to make just one big video kind of showcasing all of them. That in combination with, I don't want to just showcase a gun and call it one and done. I want to showcase guns that I haven't shown in like a year or two, bring them back out. And again, I can't really justify a whole long format video based off some older gun I've already showcased usually. So a couple years ago, I, I knew that. And so I started the series called uh, Five Plinkers. I would grab five guns, some new, some old and I just showcased them kind of quick format, but it would make for a longer video. And, uh, but I committed to doing five guns on a monthly basis. The problem with that is every now and then there's more than five guns I wanna showcase. Sometimes I can't come up with five guns and to do that on a monthly basis was actually a little bit more demanding than I realized. So we're changing it up. We're bringing it back, but we're calling it something else. We're gonna do random range day. So RRD, and this will be episode one. With that said, there's seven guns in this one to showcase. Maybe I'll do this again in a month. Maybe it'll be two months. Maybe it'll be four guns. Maybe it'll be 10. I don't know. Anyway, we got some uh, pretty cool array here. Some long range stuff, some pistols, some 22 LR, some 6.5 Creed, some pretty neat stuff. Think of it almost like a QVC in a way for guns. Just sit back, relax. You never know what's next. Unless of course you look at the timelines, you cheater. All right, this actually could have justified its own video, but I thought, why not? Let's just hit the ground running. Uh, with the series. This is what I used on the last episode of the uh, long range challenge one of away at a thousand yards and it totally crushed it. And uh, so I'm looking forward to showcasing it a little bit more. I'm still fairly unfamiliar with it, but all my shooting so far has just been so stellar. This started out because Pristine uh, Actions reached out to me a while ago, sent me an action and they take Savage Prefit barrels. And so I got one. This is actually a international barrels barrel. So there you go. A couple Canadian companies mixed in there. So hello to the neighbors up north. You guys might be a fan of this one. Interestingly, I wanted to make this somewhat different. I've never messed with a 6.5 Creedmoor with a shorter barrel than 20 inches. Uh, definitely not out of a bolt gun. I think the shortest barrel on a bolt gun is like 22 inches. So I went 18 inches here. So it's a one and eight twist uh, threaded. So I got a Huxwork suppressor at the end as well. We've got a Timony light trigger. It's a two stage, very, very nice trigger. And all of that got plopped into a Accuracy International short action uh, chassis system, the AIAXSA. A lot of acronyms going on here. What else, what else? I put a little rail here so I could uh, put a night clip on if I had wanted to. Um, we got a Vortex Razor HD Gen 2. It's a four and a half to 27 by 56. And then a LaRue uh, QD mount there as well with the diving board. I've said this in a recent video, I teased it. Why am I putting these diving boards on so much? And it is because of this thing right here. By the time I put this video out, I can now talk about this thing. This is the Vortex Impact 4000. Now, there's a lot of guns to go over in this video, so I can't get too nitty gritty with this in this particular video. So I'll have to kind of get you guys the uh, quick and dirty on it. This is at its core, uh, at its most basic form, just think of it as an on-gun laser rangefinder. You can throw it on a gun, whether the side or on top like this. And once you do the relative zero with the visible laser, it's just an on-gun laser rangefinder. Uh, whatever you're aiming at, you could go ahead and press a button. It'll tell you the yardage. And so that is that at its simplest form. 
Of course, there's more layers to it, so I'll kind of tease it a little bit here as well. It's an onboard ballistic calculator as well. There's a couple of presets already, but you could custom tune it like any ballistic calculator. Tell it your sight height, your BC, ballistic coefficient, velocity, all that good stuff. So now you can press a button to laser range find, and then it'll tell you the yardage as well as your come up in mils or MOA as well as tell you the windage. And so it's a pretty cool offering from Vortex nonetheless, because before this you could have got a, like a Wilcox Raptor and that will cost you quite a lot of money. I've always wanted one, but I just didn't you know, fork out the money just yet. Uh, well, anyway, it uh, looks like I won't be because Vortex came out with this. And I think the MSRP is about $2,999, but the retail price when they hit the street is about 2,000 bucks, $1,999. So quite a bit less expensive than the Raptor. So we got that up top here. I believe it should be calibrated okay. I've been messing around with it in my backyard, but we haven't shot with it yet. Let's see how it reads the yardage and the windage and we'll have some fun. Because there's a lot of guns to go over, we're only gonna shoot one range with this. Let's just go straight to 950 yards and have some fun. All right, so go ahead and press this guy. Aim at the target, gonna go for that silhouette in the middle. Now we're reading 954 yards and it tells me to come up nine. 0 0.01 so it might be about 9.1 windage says about one and a half that might be aggressive but who knows let's try it it'll give us a baseline anyway and then we won't know until we see impacts or splashes so let's give it a whirl again gonna go for that silhouette there windage is pretty good i'm a little high though so all that tells me is i gotta plug in information a little bit more accurately in here um so I could always adjust that later, but let's see what the truth is. So that was a great baseline though, but that was high. We'll try eight and a half. Cool. So second round impact, all that tells me is I got to accurately put in some information there. If I was a little high, that probably means the bullet's going faster than I told it it is. I thought it would be losing more velocity with an 18 inch barrel, but All right, not bad. Let's go for uh, the 10 inch target. There's three on the left, those circles. Let's go for the one on the right. Just low left of it, I'll hold. All right, let's go for, I don't know if I could repeat history. Probably got lucky, but let's go for the five inch target, let's go for that orange one. Close. Oh. I'm being stubborn, I gotta hold more to the right than I am. tough all right i'm gonna i just remember there's more guns to get to so let's just go ahead and put it on the silhouette and on a hit and then we'll move on all right second gun up is this right here it's a little ar9 made by leviathan defense they call this one the low key now yeah, they offer some cool coats, completely made in the u.s lifetime warranties all that good stuff takes glock mags and yeah, AR-9, so this one in 9mm. Uh, Leviathan Defense also does AR-15s, AR-10s, pistols, rifles, this being an AR-9 pistol. And I have not shot it yet, so let's go ahead and see what it's all about. Let's try to see if I can pistol pistol it. Functions as you'd expect, being an AR-9. Not too unfamiliar with these. Kind of cool little features here. Little Leviathan logo, pause, play, fast forward button. But unfortunately, because of laws, we can't get it there. But it's kind of cool that they throw that in there. Some sweet furniture out of the box. If you wanted to, you could go ahead and SBR it. Or, uh, you know, wait to see what the hell happens with the whole brace thing. But until then, this is kosher with the law. Because I love my dog. I don't want him kicked. This here is a Henry Homesteader. Pretty interesting one from Henry. We know them from their awesome lever actions. By the way, little teaser, I'm working on a suppressed 4570 here soon. All tactical out, of course. Anyway, until then, 
Back to some old school with some wood furniture on the Homesteader. It's a direct blowback, semi-automatic, and 9mm from Henry. But modern in the sense that it's threaded, half by 28, and so I threw on my Gimtech Lunar 9 suppressor. Uh, you can get rails on them, throw red dots on there. We're going to run some iron sights. These are the Henry mags, a little five rounder here. It also comes with this like bottom metal, if you will. You could punch these pins out and put some Glock mags in there. Ooh, iron sights. I feel like a FUD. Damn, I see why you FUDs like iron sights. Very cool. That's the Henry Homesteader. Interesting move from Henry, but hey, it's a lot of fun. All right, up next, we're going wheel gun. This is a Diamondback Sidekick. Cool thing with this is you can pop the cylinder out and go between 22 LR, or long rifle, which is what I got right now, and then 22 Magnum. So pretty cool, nine shots. Very, very cool. This is a fun one, just, uh, well, it's always fun. I don't care how long you've been shooting, but if you're gonna introduce someone to shooting too, wheel guns, you kind of have a good idea for how they work most of the time. A lot of people grew up with cap guns, uh, but just a pretty cool impulse, everything. Looks cool, all black, revolver, and it's a single or double action. I know it looks very, very uh, single action only, but in fact, it is double action as well. Oh, with a very heavy trigger, I will say. So you can go ahead and pull it back, make it a little easier on yourself. It almost feels like a squib or something, like a misfire. I think we hit it, nice and quiet. Go back to that heavy trigger. Come on. Yeah, no way I'm gonna be precise with that. All right, very cap gun-ish. When you're done, pull this guy, do that, and then push. Very cool, little 22s are always fun, especially in the form of revolvers. All right, this one I'm really excited for. If you guys know me, you know I like metal frame hammer fires, and so with that, I like Berettas. This one's right up my alley, because if you guys remember my 92X performance, I love that thing. You got a frame mounted safety, single action only, all that good stuff. Well, this is almost like that, except without the competitive edge and purpose with the weight in the frame, and without the price too. This is under a thousand bucks. So check this out, we'll go ahead and load it up. Bada boom, and then boom, safety like a 1911 in a way. And it too is single action only. There is no double action trigger on this. So I love it. It's a 1911, but made by Beretta. Think of it that way. That's a half joke. It's not a 1911, I know that. And you can throw a red dot on there. And again, under a thousand bucks. So very, very cool. All right, I haven't shot it yet. And I'm shooting at a hundred yards. So let's see what it's all about. Should we stop there? Oh, low. Low. Those are all hits, don't worry about it. Man, yeah, I love it. If you look at the trigger, it's still mounted like a hinge on top, but it's nice and flat. I don't even know if I mentioned it. This here is actually the Type 92 XI, so not the X Performance, but rather the XI. Threw a Surefire X300 on there, and then a Hollow Sun 507C. Very, very nice, man. I really dig it. All right, up next, this one is an interesting one. This is not your standard AR-15. All right, this is the Desert Tech Quattro 15. Quattro for what's going on right here. You guys might have seen this before, at least he is on Instagram and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this mag is not AR-15-esque at all. Everything else though, upper wise it is. The lower though, that's really the bread and butter with Desert Tech here. They cleared that out to accept this mag and it is a quad stack AR-15 mag, chambered in 556, 223, of course. I think it's actually got a 223 wild barrel, so shoot both. Because if you wanted some extended capacity in the past, Surefire made a quad stack mag, but it fit in a regular AR-15 mag well. So it like starts as quad and then like bottlenecks, and it's been known to cause quite a few feeding issues, whereas this stays quad stack all the way, and so they had to rework the lower to do that. I'm a little reluctant to give you more information on it just because YouTube might slap my wrist. So for the sake of that, this represents the quad stack mag, but this one's not really quad stack. In fact, this one's got a limiter on it to where I can only load 29 rounds, theoretically, and I didn't even do that. I'm a good boy, all right, YouTube? Anyway, but that's what the Quattro 15 could be, just so you know. Kind of cool. You also can release the bolt right here. I almost forgot to mention, the optic is a really weird one. It's an Aimpoint 9000L. It's a fixed two power optic, two MOA. It's like an early, early red iteration of a red dot. And I bought it for like 50 bucks. 
uh, at a local shop. So I just thought, why not? All right, let's do it. See, I'm not gonna load it all the way. I won't even tell you what the capacity on this thing is because that might get me in trouble. All right, and lastly, this is the Hellcat Pro, which I've showcased before. A couple differences. Uh, they recently introduced a threaded barrel for the Hellcat Pro. And so of course I threw on a suppressor. This is a rugged Obsidian 45. I know it's a 45 can, but it works with a nine. So that's gonna be cool in its own right. And then they recently came out with these 17 round mags for the Hellcat Pro. They'll work with the standard Hellcat, but you're gonna have like a huge gap of like, you know, metal exposed. So this is cool. They initially had the Hellcat, you know, with like a 13 round mag, and then eventually a 15 round came out and it was extended with like this plastic here. And then that, without the plastic, ended up being the flush fitting mag for the Hellcat Pro. So now we have an extended mag for the Hellcat Pro, 17 rounds. So you got full size capacity on just a slightly larger version of a Hellcat. Of course, this isn't trying to hide from anybody with a suppressor, but what the heck, I just like to have fun. Oh, we hit something. This recoil impulse suppressed is really freaking cool. The standard Hellcat, not RDP, not Pro, is a pretty snappy gun just because it's a concealed carry gun. Obviously with the Pro, with the suppressor, that's all gone. This is like shooting a full-size gun, which is kind of funny to turn a Hellcat into a full-size kind of capable gun, but why not? Just because I like different. Oh yeah, and then of course I spray painted it because I'm a bozo and I like doing that. Then a Streamlight TLR7A on there. Pretty cool little nightstand package. I dig it, that will be a cool nightstand gun, like I said. All right, so there's a lot of guns to go over, but hopefully we grazed through it pretty quickly. Probably gave most attention to the 18-inch 6.5 Creedmoor just because I had a lot of requests from the last long range episode. Um, and so, uh, yeah, but there it is. Some guns that I wanted to bring out, I don't know if I could have justified a whole in-depth video on each one. And so I thought we could just quickly bang out uh, some uh, shooting on all of them in one. Let me know if you guys like this series of videos. Honestly, even if you don't, I'm probably gonna keep doing them. So take it or leave it. Guys, that does it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. See you guys next time.